with the, you know with broadcast signal intrusion more than just a star you're an executive producer on this you've got a lot of interest in this like you've got a lot of hats on this project what was it about this premise and this project that really that really drew you to it um yeah for me it was the way that it you know phil drinkwater and tim woodall they, they wrote this really interesting and great script that that you know jacob gentry allowed us to to both kind of sit with it and it was like unsettling where it just something about it just um kind of kept or at least for me kept i kept thinking about it and i couldn't stop thinking about it and and i you know there's that thing in very i guess similar to james the character i play that i had to just dig a little deeper you know and and for me talking to jacob and, and his vision alone was was something that i was just really excited to be part of because you know he's a uh, He's, he's someone who, when he makes a film, he goes, wall, balls out. You know, he, he, really, he really gets down. And, and, and I love his references of the movies that he was, that, you know, the tone and, and like the 1970s, like thrillers. And, 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 and obviously you see a lot of the references and, and inspiration in that. But for me, it's just looking at the, what is inspired by that this was, these events really happened throughout kind of like the eighties and nineties. And, and there's most of them are still unsolved and people don't know why they did it. And, and so a lot of people don't even know how they did it. And um, so I think this script was brilliant that how it took a step further of like, what if it does connect with something a little more sinister and, and, um, and that was really interesting. And, and I really wanted to explore that and, and really kind of at least get a little more hands-on with the story and, and this character. You know, even before, um, even before he starts to pull the threads of the central mystery of this film, like James is a character that's obsessed. He's driven. We see him when we first see him, he's kind of like in his little like bat cave, basically, like kind of like, you know, just converting all this like VHS film. How did you find your performance? Like, what was it about the character that you were like, this is how I'm going to approach my, you know, my performance with this guy? Yeah, I think what happens for, for me, I just kept thinking, what what happens when you have too much time to think? Mm -hmm. I and 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 this to me, that's what jumped out at me. Like this guy is alone a lot, and and you know he he when he does communicate with people, he just wants to keep it short and move along. Like it, it's it's like this train. Like don't stop this train. Just keep it moving, and I'll get on whenever I want to right? It's that whole idea. But, you know, I, I think that's the obsession that, that kind of happens because when you, when something kind of stands out, then you can't help but kind of chase it and you chase it wherever it goes. And sometimes it splits into two or three, and then you have to choose between what you want to choose. And, and I just felt that like someone like, like him who, who does have the backstory is not all filled out for you as an audience member but it's implied or you get to know a little better through his actions throughout the whole journey. And, and that was really interesting to me instead of having so much exposition about, you know, his, where he, you know, who his parents were and all this stuff, which I, I think in other movies, it is important. But for this one, I, I thought that that was um, the beauty of, of kind of um, along with the whole theme of, of, of these intrusions that, you know, you can, create this truth that is very truthful to you, but it might not be the truth in, in whatever reality that we're living in. Sure. And you know, one of the things, and I, this is a scene I brought up to Jacob and, and Kelly too, because it's one that, that had caught me off guard when I was watching this movie. I love the scene when you're in the dive bar with Alice, when James is in the dive bar with Alice, and you guys are passing the shots back and forth because it's a rare moment for James. You know, he's not in his hole. He's not, it's, he's finally interacting with other people in a prolonged kind of clip. How did that scene kind of come about? Like Kelly was saying, it wasn't originally in the script. Yeah, there wasn't originally in the script. And we're also, you know, it's, it's also being like, for James, it was like being forced to even have interaction like you have to be chased you have to be followed you have to get away and then finally there's a relief that it might not be as threatening that you as as he thought it was but um i think it's always like trying that's uh, kelly's such a brilliant actress and she brought a lot to it in the sense of like i think a lot of it was you know in between the lines the things that were happening that you got, informed you who she is or who she was or who she's what she's trying to 
get from James. And I think a lot of times beyond getting something, it's just actually companionship too in the beginning, right? It's just finding someone that you can even express anything to and finding some sort of comfort. And, and at the end of the day, you know, a couple of shots kind of need, you need to do that to get there, which <laughs> I think a lot of people have that, uh, have that same kind of barrier. So, but that, that scene was, was really interesting and fun because kind of having the shots pass back and forth just allowed some movement as opposed to just saying these, these the lines and, and I don't know, it brought a little more weight to it and also a little bit of levity um, that the film I think needed at that point. Sure. You know, in working with Jacob and, and Sarah Sharp, how was it developing the look for James? Like how, like, what did you want to say about his character just through his wardrobe and his presence? Yeah, first of all, Sarah Sharp is like so badass. She's a she was a costume designer and production designer, so she was just pulling double duty. But I think there this movie it just helped because she got to really just uh, um kind of work with Jacob and tandem to to figure out like the color the, the colors and making sure that they were aligning with the production design, and so it wasn't nothing was fighting each other. And 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 the whole corduroy jacket was was really Jacob's um kind of nod to uh, uh, a blowout in um, you know, John Travolta and in, in, in the 70s um, thriller movie. And he, he's a De Palma, like he, he it, De Palma is a big inspiration to him, but I don't know, just kind of looking at that, how also someone who does dress a certain way and informs you kind of how he doesn't want to change much or doesn't really allow new information to come in. So for him to even go on this journey was a big deal and, and, and stepping outside of the box. Um, I, I hope that audiences got to see that it, it did inform that he was kind of out of his element and yeah, yeah. taking something that he probably shouldn't have. Right. Like James, for me, like when I see that character, he feels like he's a man out of time. Like mm. he, he belongs to that parallax view. He belongs to the conversation era. And with something like, something that like shot in four weeks, how is it kind of like drilling into that and maintaining that perspective during the entire principal photography period? Yeah, I ate it up, man. I love it. I, I, I love being on set. I love uh, working every day, like just because it just allows you to stay in. And, you know, this is actually one of the only films or even projects that I, I'm literally almost in every scene, you know, and in, in, that, in that regards, I just loved kind of the collaboration that it took like with Scott the our, our, our cinematographer, kind of knowing that we only had a limited amount of time. So like listening to hearing the shots that he wants and, and not to affect performance, but to also know that if I can align it with, with what I'm trying to do at that moment to kind of capture that shot that he needs that, you know, Jacob is, is wanting and kind of working together because I sometimes you know and I, I respect that a lot of actors like I just focus on the performance and let them capture it but at times when you have less than four weeks to shoot a film you also want to make sure that the rest of the artists around you are getting what they intend to in 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 the in in the breath of of kind of the story as a whole so because at the end of the day we're all trying to capture something that we can all be proud of and and that that was kind of maybe I don't know the producer side of it but I really enjoyed that process. Well, as somebody that was on set every day, and yeah, even though it's a quick shoot, you are, you're the POV character. You're in almost every, you know, you're are kind of like Sam Spade in this thing. Mm -hmm. Was it tough to keep that mindset and to keep that level of energy throughout the entire shoot? Um, yeah, you know, there's moments where it was, you know, it was heavy and, and I, but I, I just, I think I love the fact that I was working from morning to night going home and sleeping and not even ha having moments to think about it too much. So once I got, got to work in the morning, it was, it was just back in it. Like I never left, uh, you know, those nightmare sequences, it, it kind of got to me at certain points. Cause like hands coming out is, is a very easy thing to carry over from when you go to bed and trying to go to sleep and to hope that no hands come because that was practical as well a lot of these things were practical it was actually Sarah Sharp and her, like her sister were under a bed they got cut out they're sticking their hands out and I'm just laying on it while there's like two people under the bed so it was it, it was I just love that style of filmmaking because you know everyone had all hands are on deck and everyone just does whatever to kind of get the shot 
Yeah, with that and with that in mind, like, you know, we, we've and we've kind of danced around this a bit, but how was it working with Jacob? I mean, because, yeah, I feel like you guys are as you're helming this thing. Like, how is it like determining tone, determining pacing, determining all that stuff? Me and him are homies in the sense that we just when we get on a phone, we talk. We, we don't talk less than like two or three hours. It's like if I get on, I have to prepare myself. And I think he does, too, because we just go down this rabbit hole of just talking about everything and, and anything that just in life in general, but specifically about this film, I just trusted him. You know, he, everything that he was doing, I was trusting and any questions I would have, he would always have a question back to me because I think that is, that is a way to kind of have a convergence of like meeting somewhere where we're dry. There's a driving force that kind of um, is impenetrable in a lot of ways. And, and I think sometimes you do need to take a little of that time to get there as opposed to just saying, this is it, this is the answer. And there's moments where it was, we just knew, but in particular this movie, there was a lot of uh, uh, having to just sit in it, even if it's quick, to know if it feels right or not. And, and sometimes it might not be intellectual and not, not, might not be something that can be overanalyzed as well. Sure. And I think I got time for just one more, but you know, with broadcast signal, like in the can and everything coming out in time for Halloween, of course, like what are you hoping that this kind of like lends to the genre space and really just kind of like that you're really proud to kind of share with audiences as it, you know, makes its way into theaters and VOD. Yeah, I'm really proud. I mean, it is a perfect time. I think there's, there's some great, uh, films in this genre that 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 I, I think this particular film I think is very unique in the sense that it's not like the typical or the horror that that I think a lot of people kind of uh, um, associate it with. This is you know this is very eerie. This is very unsettling, and and also it says a lot about kind of this journey of of all of us could go down very easily, you know. And but what what particularly I I didn't know that I was going to take away from this film is the audience participation and their theories and, and, and having this conversation that I think is the best part about films and this filmmaking is that people can take ownership of this and say, no, this is what I think it is from all the things that I've seen in front of me. And um, while also going down this fun, thrilling ride that I, I hope that people are also entertained as well.